Hello. Today we are going to take a look at a very interesting device. Recently I was tasked in replacing all filters in this Kuna water purification system. This is a reverse osmosis filter. The interesting part is this is a crazy expensive unit and I was dealing in the past in a, with a reverse osmosis systems. I just wanted to take a look what's inside and why it is so expensive. So first of all, this is a very nice unit. The, the design is extremely nice. Unit itself was made in Sweden. You might get feeling that this is going to be uh, all in one unit, but actually you need a external water tank. So that might compromise a little bit of a uh, uh, design. Here we've got a DC input for a 24 volt DC. Here we've got the inlet and outlet hoses for different applications and we are going to check each of them what they do and where they are connected and here is a connector for uv germicidal lamp those side panel can be removed for maintains where you need to replace the the filters the membrane or do any other maintain you can slide them off and you gain access to everything what's inside and i already undo them so we can have a peek we can take a look what we've got inside so first of all what we can see we can see that everything is very neatly done the device itself have a microcontroller and it's going to check where you need to replace the filters so that's a, a very good thing from other technical stuff on the bottom part you can see a very tiny sponge and that tiny sponge i'm trying to it's too heavy to to lift to the the camera I'm trying to get uh, a picture there is a tiny limit switch if the sponge detect water it's going to expand and touch that limit switch and trigger a shut off valve preventing you from uh, leaking so that's a very very interesting design very good they think about that so let's take a look at the beginning. Orange is going to be our main water supply. Those devices are just a solenoid valve. If we apply a voltage to them, voltage with current, we are going to allow close water or open them. So this is our main water inlet. We've got a electronic valve, electric valve, and it's going to be divided for this device. I do not see what this is, but I'm going to make a guess that's going to be a pressure sensor because it is a kind of dead leg and that's going to be a pressure sensor and our water through the valve, pressure sensor, so our water goes here to the first filter. This is going to be like a sentiment filter. I expect that's going to be a 20 microns. So we go here, 20 microns, go to the second stage. That's going to be a five microns. And instead of going to the carbon filter, we go with this tube. And that tube go there, go under UV lamp. 
into the booster pump. What is a booster pump? In general, the reverse osmosis membrane, they like to have a higher pressure to work efficiently and to flush the membrane. So we would like to have a, a certain pressure there. And if we cannot deliver that from our water supply, then the booster pump is going to make it happen. And from the booster pump, we go here and we go there. And this is our last stage. And this is the carbon filter. From what I was trained, this is not the correct way. I was trained that the carbon filter should be always before the last stage on the sediment filter. A reason for that is the carbon filter can have some impurities from manufacturing, can have a, like a small grain of carbon on the shell in the, in the places where the water can flush them and they can go into membrane and clog it. So the general idea that how I saw it strain, it should be always before a sediment filter. So the sediment filter will be able to catch anything of that carbon particles, but maybe they, they know they, they manufacture very great carbon filters. But that's just the thing that stared, stood out to me. And we go out and where our water from this carbon filter is going. It's going to the reverse osmosis membrane. Very interesting build. Looks like you are going to replace this as a whole unit instead of unscrewing and just changing the insert. That's how you do it on uh, cheaper models. On the shell, outer shell, We've got this red tube. Red tube is going to be a waste and it's going to be going into the drain. It's going to be cleaning the membrane and also removing anything that is uh, contaminated. So that's where it go. So we observe the red tube. Red tube go here into those solenoid valve and it is divided by this tiny tube really tiny tube that is making couple 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 loops and i believe this is like a capillary tube maybe not a capillary but a restriction valve so it's going to very slowly drain little amount of water and it's going to be go directly to the drain but they've got this solenoid valve that is creating a path and we can open it and flush with a high force to clean the membrane it's going to be engaged through the microcontroller what we go next so the clean water after reverse osmosis membrane is on the bottom and it's going through the tube on the back and we go to this T junction. From this T junction, we are going to the tank that is going to storage for our clean water. We go here into this device. I believe this device is designed for checking the TDS of our water. So it's going to be able to read what kind of purity are we getting the microcontroller will be able to check do we need to replace our membrane tds is a very simple way of measuring does the membrane is working properly if you've got extremely pure the ionized water with nothing dissolved inside we are going to get no electric current flowing, so we can stack to probe. 
you can try to pass a current through it or just to measure the resistance and you are going to read known. As you are going to get morphing dissolve, the current will start passing and the resistance is going to get lower and you know that you've got uh, impurities, you've got lots of ions inside. So I make a guess that's what this device is doing because it's flow directly through the storage tank which is uh, yellow. But we can go the other route with this device and that looks like a carbon filter to me. It could be also a device for mineralizing but my guess that's going to be a carbon filter and here we got the outlet and this outlet let's let's remove it this outlet go here into this element and this is a uv germicidal lamp and that's how it looks like just a tube that is creating UVC radiation. And this is a very interesting and funny thing because many people and sellers they are telling that this device is killing germs and that it's not technically true because UVC is damaging the DNA and preventing from replicating but basically you are going to drink uh, alive germs. They are not going to disappear, they are not going to be killed, they got just damaged DNA and they cannot replicate but they are still here and they are still alive just like with the radioactive exposure you are not dying just like that but your your body cannot make a, a copies of the cells inside so this is how it looks like how in my opinion looks the build quality this is uh, absolutely crazy nice device here you can see the model name but does it worth of the money what they are asking in my personal opinion no you everything that you can see here looks fancy and looks like a extremely complicated build quality but it's not those solenoid valves pressure switches basically each component that you can see here is a uh, well known in the industrial and most likely you use them when you for example order a drink at the vending machine you you pay for a coffee and vending machine is making that coffee for you and they are using solenoid valves to add the milk add the water and all sorts of different things most likely they cleaning water on site with a reverse osmosis system so there is really nothing like extremely crazy expensive the rest of stuff like the membrane you can check if membrane is good or no just by simply measuring the tds by yourself or sending to to the lab so in my personal opinion this is overpriced there is no no magic there are expensive components like the pump the microcontroller and all the labor but this is quite overpriced and i'm going to replace with a extremely much cheaper filter setup and i'm 100 percent sure that i'm going to get exactly the same good results for our lab water so 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that interesting. See you next time and bye bye.